Today we're going to review chronic kidney disease. In this video, we will look at the normal filtering function of a kidney, and then we'll take a look at what happens when we have chronic kidney disease. So first, let's review the anatomy of the kidney. We'll show the blood flow coming into the kidney. The blood is filtered by the kidney, and the clean blood, or filtered blood, flows out through the vein. And then the filtrate, so the stuff that we've gotten rid of, goes into the ureter, and that's what we call urine. Let's take a little bit closer look at the filtration system of the kidney. The blood flows in to the individual little nephrons of the kidney, so the little units of the kidney. In here, there's a filter. What happens is everything except for red blood cells and large protein molecules will fit through this filter. So that's basically water, your electrolytes, and your waste products from protein metabolism, which are creatinine and urea. Now these go through the filter, and then they pass through these long tubes. And these tubes are there to help the body be able to reabsorb the water that it needs, and to help reabsorb the electrolytes that it needs. We need to re reabsorb some of the electrolytes at times to help balance the pH of the blood. This process allows the body to regulate the exact composition of the blood. After this passes through, what's left over is what makes up urine. So in a cat that's eating a low moisture diet, the body will reabsorb a lot of the moisture. So you're going to have really concentrated urine in cats that are really well hydrated, they're going to have excess water and this is the way the body gets rid of it, is it goes into the urine. If we remember from the healthy urinary tract, dilute urine is a healthy, happy bladder. Okay, so now we want to take a look at what happens when we lose the function of the kidney. These animals, we've lost 70% of kidney function. We're going to kind of simplify this we're going to look at this picture of the filter as the whole kidney, but really it represents a unit in the kidney, and we've lost 70% of them. But it still should illustrate a good point here. So the cat over age or disease has lost 70% of its function. 70% of this filter doesn't work anymore. It's gone. And so the filter, where the body's trying to get rid of waste products, is only this little part here, just this little 30% that's left. So here, we get our electrolytes flowing through, we get our water molecules flowing through, and we get our waste products flowing through. But the rest of the 70%, since it's not working, the waste product continues to flow in the body, the electrolytes keep flowing in the body, and some of the water keeps flowing in the body. And so what you have is really inefficient filtering of your blood. And so these toxins, especially, and some of your electrolytes will build up in the bloodstream, and this is what makes the cat sick from kidney disease. When we get to this point, this is when we want to make sure we can reduce the amount of waste products that's made. So we want highly digestible protein sources. So the less digestible the protein source is, the more waste product is going to be made. But this does not mean that we'd want to limit the protein necessarily. Not at this point. When they're on a high quality protein and then they get sick from the buildup of waste products, that's when we may need to look at trying to lower the protein percentage. But at first, we just need them on a really high quality protein so there's less waste product being produced, which are, are most of the diets that we carry. And the other thing that we need to control are the electrolytes. And the most important one to look at has been found by research to be phosphorus. In the over-the-counter diets, we're going to look for a phosphorus level below 0.8%. Now, don't worry. <laughs> this is a very difficult number to find. So we have identified specific formulas that we carry and have put them in the solution sheets. We also have some that are italicized on those solution sheets. Those are going to be below 40% protein. And that's as low as we're going to get. If they need something more substantial than that, then they will have to try the prescription foods because we just don't carry foods that are that low. So in these cats, 
we've decreased the phosphorus level so that we have less of the electrolyte flowing around and we have increased the digestibility of our protein sources and so we've reduced some of the waste products that are made. Now there's still some that are going to float around but we've tried to reduce it as much as possible and what we try to do is we try to increase as much as we can the filtering of the kidneys. So we need to increase the amount of blood that flows in and gets filtered. How do we do that? One way we can do that is by increasing the water in the diet. The more moisture in the diet, the more volume we will have in our blood. because The water goes into our bloodstream. And the more water we have, the more blood will flow into the kidney and be filtered. And we will end up losing more water that way, so the cat will have to urinate more frequently, but we're getting a higher flow. So the circulating blood, instead of hitting this filter once every 10 minutes, the blood will go through and hit that filter three to four times in 10 minutes. So we're increasing the amount of times that it flows past this filter here. And so that will increase the amount of filtration. So the second way that we can increase blood flow to the kidney is with herbal remedies. So these can be Chinese herbs and Western herbs. And we can also use veterinary drugs. But for our solution purposes, we're going to use herbal remedies. And what we can do is we can add herbs to the diet that help increase the blood flowing to the kidneys. So they make the amount of the blood that comes into the kidneys more. So if we take a look back at our original drawing of where the blood flows into the kidney, and out of the kidney, that main artery there increases the flow to that area. We increase the flow, that means the more blood gets to go past this little amount of filter that we have left. The more times that blood passes this little filter, the more we can get the toxins out of the system, into the urine, and out of the body. So we have shown what happens in a healthy kidney, we've shown what happens in a cat with chronic kidney disease and how their filtration is limited and how we can help improve that condition by reducing the waste products that are made by the body by having high quality, highly digestible proteins. We can increase their water consumption so that we get more blood flow through the kidney and so it gets filtered more often. And then we can also add some herbal supplements that can help increase blood flow to the kidneys. And increasing the blood flow to the kidneys, once again, will increase the amount of filtering possible. And this leads to cats that feel better for longer.